this video, I'm going to be building a super budget gaming PC build for 2021 featuring the brand new Ryzen 5600G APU. I'll be covering off all of the components I selected for this build and why, and crucially, how I kept it in budget. I'll be showing you how to put it together from start to finish, including cables, wiring, drivers, BIOS, you name it, we're going to cover it all. I'll also, of course, then be testing the completed system later on in some of my favourite titles and some of your guys' favourite games too. We're talking Apex Legends, Valorant, CSGO, Overwatch. We're going to cover it all. Without any further ado, though, let's dive into it after a quick ad from today's video sponsor. The latest range of Netgear Nighthawk routers are now available at eBuyer. With support for the latest Wi-Fi 6 tech, which provides incredible network speeds alongside powerful processing and great signal strength, it's awesome for staying online with low latency all of the time. I've taken a look at the AX6, AX12 and XR1000 over on the eBuyer YouTube channel and been super impressed. Strong signal strength and the legendary Duma OS on selected routers make them perfect for gamers out there. Learn more at the video in the card section now and the links to eBuyer at the top of the description below. Let's begin by talking through all of the components and parts I selected today. At the heart of the build is our CPU slash GPU slash APU. It's a bit confusing, I will explain. I've just been watching this edit back before it goes live and realised how ridiculous my hoodie looks. Seagate sent it over, which is very kind, but it's far too big. Uh, so please excuse crimes against fashion in this video and try and focus on the, uh, on the PC building. I won't make the same mistakes again. <laughs> this is AMD's Ryzen 5 5600G. And it's almost as if an RX 480 and a Ryzen 5 3600X had a baby. And that's right, it's a CPU and a GPU in one chip. This isn't something I would normally go for in a really budget build, but with GPUs nearly impossible to buy and really impressive performance gains over the last gen of APUs, AMD have killed it. We'll be pairing this up with a 16 gigabyte kit of RAM from Corsair. This is their Vengeance RGB RT and it is brand spanking new. It's got this cool little white accent on, but it's actually optimized for Ryzen and it has a fast 3600 megahertz clock speed. When you're going for an APU, you need dual channel memory. So you need two DIMMs, you need a motherboard with four slots and you need 3600 megahertz or above because this is going to give you the fast speed you need more on that later. I'll be building all of our system today on MSI's lovely budget B550M Pro VDH. This is one of the cheapest and best value B550 boards around. You aren't going to get bags of overclocking room or anything like that, but you do get support for Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, a really nice uh, IO slash rear panel, four RAM DIMM slots for dual channel memory performance and great upgrades, and of course support to drop in one of the latest GPUs a bit later if you wanted to upgrade the build. Not that you'll need to, as you'll see from the out of the box performance figures we'll be covering off later. As far as storage goes, I've just gone for a very simple Seagate Barracuda Q1. This is a 500 gig uh, SSD, it's a two and a half inch drive. It's nowhere near as fast as something like a Gen 3 or Gen 4 NVMe drive, but they're more expensive and this build is all about the budget. As far as cooling goes, I'll be sticking with AMD's stock cooler. This comes included with the 5600G and will do a great job and it's free. Happy days. As far as power goes for the build, I've picked up Cooler Master's MWE 500. This is going to be more than enough for the build in its current state and some upgrades later on. If you go and drop in like a $500 GPU, I would recommend you upgrade that power supply. But for now, this is going to work great uh, with a bit of headroom, some good 80 plus certification and most importantly, a superb price point. The final component is the case and I'll be building today's system inside of Cooler Master's MB320L. We featured this in our top 10 case roundup for 2021, which if you haven't seen yet, you should definitely go and give a watch. It's a really good video, although I am probably slightly biased on that front. Let's cover off the build process now though and show you actually how to put the system together. We'll be starting off with the motherboard, CPU and RAM, so everything else, vamos! In order to install the Ryzen processor, you want to carefully remove it from its plastic sleeve-in and then locate this little golden triangle on the bottom left corner of the chip. We'll be matching this triangle up with the triangle on the top left corner of our CPU socket. That's this square right in the middle. To install the CPU, simply go ahead and pull up the arm on that CPU socket, line those triangles up and drop the processor into place. Be nice and gentle as it is very delicate and then pop the arm back down. The arm should go down with no issues whatsoever. A little something like this. The next component then on the hit list today is the RAM or the memory. I already talked about why I've gone for 
for this RAM, but there is something important to note with APUs. Unlike a GPU, they don't have their own dedicated graphics memory and have to use the system's memory instead. That's why getting a fast kit is important. And I'll be showing you later on in the video how to set the speed to make sure it's running at 3600 megahertz. By default, it won't do. The speed on the box just indicates the speed the RAM is capable of actually being clocked up to. To install the RAM or the memory, you want to simply go ahead and find the notch on the RAM dim itself and line this up with the notch on the RAM dim slot. Pull back the clips on the slot you want to use, slide the memory into place, apply a bit of pressure, and it will click in nice and easily. For this build today, we want to use the second and fourth slots. This will ensure we get dual channel performance. If you install them in the wrong slot, you don't get that dual channel benefit, so make sure you get this one right. Once we've done that, then there's only one more thing to do as far as the motherboard's concerned, and that is the CPU cooler. For this build, we're going to use the AMD included stock cooler, and by default, this will have some thermal paste pre-applied on the bottom to basically create that thermal bond with the processor. I've used this cooler before, so I need to drop on a dab of my own, and then we can secure the cooler down. You will need to remove the pre-installed plastic brackets to do this, before actually slotting the cooler on and tightening in a cross pattern, corner by corner, a bit at a time, do a few laps around the cooler actually, a bit like Lando Norris with a screwdriver and you are good to go. The next stage of the build process then is actually to go ahead and install the motherboard. Now to do this, you want to locate each of the holes on the board. You'll find in this case, we've got three at the top, three along the middle and two along the bottom. These are what we're going to use to fasten the board into our case today, which is Cooler Masters MB320L. As I said earlier, I've used this case quite a lot at this point, but that's because it's genuinely absolutely fantastic. Go ahead and remove the tempered glass side panel, and this will actually expose the standoffs in the case. We want these to match up with the holes we just found a moment ago. So let me check, three at the top, three in the middle, and two along the bottom, but at slightly different levels, perfect. If they don't quite line up or they're in the wrong place, don't worry, grab a pair of pliers or an included cable tool and just move these to the right locations. Once you've done this, you can screw the motherboard in corner by corner. It's often easier to do this with the case flat, just to make everything that little bit more simple. Next up on the hit list then is our storage. Now you'll see here with any two and a half inch SSD that you've got four holes in the bottom of the drive not to be confused with the two holes on either side. If you locate these holes along the bottom, you then want to take these included sort of screws slash posts that you get with the case. We're going to screw these into the bottom of the drive and then slot the drive into the SSD mount and the rubber grommets in the case. This will put it nicely on show and then we just need to wire it up with a SATA data and a SATA power cable. Remember, as usual, to plug the other end of the SATA data cable into the motherboard, and this connector comes included in your motherboard's box. Last up then is the power for the system today. Now this power supply is a non-modular unit, meaning all the cables just come bundled in as standard. That isn't actually going to be too much of an issue. It is more of a headache as far as cable management goes, but a cable tie or two should sort that one out nicely. The power supply in this system though is just gonna slot into the back rear side of the case. So just a little something like this. You want to just slide the unit in with the fan facing downwards to pull fresh air in from under the case. And you should find that four holes on the rear of the chassis line up with the power supply itself. Use four of the included power supply screws that you get with the power supply to pop this into place. And then all we need to do is plug up power for our CPU and our motherboard. This is the smallest and the largest connector respectively with eight and 24 pins each. These go in a little something like this. Once you've done that, you've just got your front panel cables and connectors to go. This includes our USB 3 connector, which is notched and only goes in one way around. The HD audio connector, which plugs up to the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard. And finally, your JFP1 front panel connections, uh, which are a little bit more complicated and can be quite fiddly. But check out the diagram on your screen now, follow it nice and closely, and then you should be good to go. If you get these the wrong way round, don't worry, don't panic. It won't explode, it just won't boot up first time, uh, which we'll talk about in the troubleshooting section of today's video a little bit later. And with that, we're able to move on to the next section of today's video, our BIOS, drivers and Windows install before taking a look at just how well the system performs. In order to actually jump into your motherboard's BIOS, you want to plug your system in, turn it on and hit the delete key on your keyboard. This should prompt you with this overall BIOS splash screen. Once we're into this, we're going to go into our overclocking settings, and this is where we're going to increase the speed of our RAM or our memory. 
Make sure you enable XMP and set the speed of the RAM to 3600 MHz. This is super, super important and will give us a real performance upside on our Ryzen CPU. Once you've done this, you want to head to the link in the description below to generate a bootable Windows USB drive. This basically turns a normal USB flash drive, any that you buy that's 8 or 16 gigs, into a drive that you can use to install Windows. Plug this in, exit the BIOS, and you should automatically jump into your bootable Windows USB. This is where you ask a few questions, you're asked to agree to some terms and conditions, you're asked to choose a drive uh, to actually install Windows onto, and then just jump through all the usual rigmarole when it comes to Windows. Questions about data privacy, location tracking, all of that good stuff. Agree to the terms and conditions, sort your keyboard layouts out, and then you're pretty much into Windows itself. This process can take anywhere between 20 minutes and an hour, depending on the spec of your system, speed of your storage, and all that good stuff. Uh, so be patient and just take it step by step. Once you've done this, it can be tempting to just jump into your favorite game straight off the bat and start getting those Ws. But unfortunately, there's one more thing you need to do. Navigate once again to the link in the description below uh, on your motherboard's BIOS and driver page. This is where you'll find all the different drivers uh, for your motherboard and your hardware. This rule applies for any motherboard, just search the name of the motherboard plus the word drivers. Go ahead and install the LAN uh, drivers for your internet, any Wi-Fi drivers, if your board has Wi-Fi, ours doesn't, any chipset drivers as well, that's pretty important uh, when it comes to your CPU. You will need to restart the system a few times as you see uh, from what we had to do. Just jump through those phases one by one, nice and simple, nice and easy, and take your time. Don't try and install all three at the same time because it's a recipe uh, for headache and disaster. Once you've done that though, we're able to boot the system up properly this time and test out the gaming performance. But before we do that, there's something we do here on the GeekerWatt channel in every one of our videos, and that's to see how good the system looks in an epic glam montage. We'll rejoin you in a second for the gaming benchmark but first, roll that montage. As far as the gaming performance of this system goes, we have admittedly changed our benchmark suite slightly to accommodate more for an APU. The fact of the matter is, something like Cyberpunk is just not going to work uh, on a chip with this kind of makeup. Instead, games like Apex, Valorant, Fortnite, Overwatch, CSGO and Rainbow Six are going to be exactly where we're positioning things. Those esports titles are where you're absolutely going to get the best set of results, and in terms of results, we were pretty impressed. Kicking things off with Apex Legends at 1080p, tuning many of our settings uh, towards the lower end, admittedly, we got just shy of 60 frames per second on average. The game looked great, and as usual, we tracked all of our frame rates using MSI Afterburner's Reva Tuner. We also tested out Valorant, a game that's probably the easiest on the list today to run. Here at 1080p high settings, so remember we can tune these down and get even more frames if need be, we got 94 frames per second at 1080p. This is a huge improvement over what we'd seen on last generation APUs, or even some of the Intel chips with graphics bundled in. Heck, I'd go as far to say this is even on par or better than a dedicated GPU like the GT1030. Fortnite was next and that was also pretty positive. Remember the key frame rate figure we're after here is 60 frames a second in a budget build. At 1080p, low or competitive settings, we managed to achieve 77 FPS in Fortnite. While it's not the 296 that you might find on an RTX 3060, it is all importantly over that 60 FPS mark and pretty good for us. Next up is Overwatch and here at 1080p, once again, we got some impressive results. Just shy of 90 frames a second or 87 FPS on average. That's well in excess of the 60 frames a second mark, which is the crucial uh, marker of success for a build like this. CSGO is next up, and at 1080p high settings, we were able to achieve 85 frames per second. Once again, not bad uh, as far as our frame rate goes, nearly touching at the 90 FPS mark in fact, which is very impressive for a system like this. Yes, CSGO is an easier game to run, but we're still getting over 80 frames uh, from our really, really budget APU. Finally then, the last game today is a bit of Rainbow Six Siege. A little bit more difficult to run on an APU like this, but here we still got some very playable results. 
1080p yielded 67 FPS. So once again, over that 60 FPS mark. I might sound a little bit like a broken record, but 60 frames is the crucial area you should be aiming for in any budget build. Anything less for a first person shooter is just not really good enough. On that note though, that wraps it up for the benchmarks, the BIOS, the drivers, and the entire video today. If you enjoyed it, if you like my fashion sense, make sure to give it a big old like rating. Get subscribed if you'd like to see more from me. Thanks for watching though, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.